Welcome back, everyone. We're taking a break from the Arc 5 story so far in our Link Evolution playthrough to dive back into our Challenge Mode playthrough. And this time, we're taking on some of the new people that Link Evolution has brought along with us in the V-Rain series. This time, we'll be taking on the Gore using some of the new cards that v uh, Link Evolution has brought as well. I've been looking forward to using this deck for a really long time. If you guys have been watching the Arc 5 story mode so far, you've already seen me use it once. So this time, I'm bringing out the Magician Girls deck, and if you stay tuned to the end of this video, after I duel the Gore, get an easy win real quick because my Magician Girls deck is probably the greatest deck in the history of dueling. I mean, Yugi Moto used it, so why wouldn't it be that awesome? You can check out the recipe for my own deck build at the end of this video. I'll go over the cards I've got and the way I've decided to build it so far. You guys can give me any feedback you have on the deck and your own card suggestions as well, but I'm pretty happy with the build. I made it of my own accord, and I didn't really look at any other build guides, so maybe there are better ways to do it. There might be better cards that I don't have unlocked yet that could go into the deck and make it better as well. So let me know those suggestions, of course, and then we'll go over that later. In the meantime, let's take on the gore again. Now, all the deck recipe videos I've made so far on the channel, I've always done in their own video. But I'm so confident in this deck that I'm going to absolutely destroy the gore. I assume it's going to be like a five minute video if I don't include um, how to build this deck. So, my ego aside, let's get right to it. Let's summon Berry Magician Girl. I'll go over their effects again, especially when I'm going over the recipe. But for now, Berry, Magi Berry Magician Girl lets me draw any of the Magician Girls from my deck immediately. And then when she's attacked, I can switch her to defense position to summon a Magician Girl from the deck as well. So she provides a lot of draw power. She's really good. This deck is just really intense draw power. You can really get the cards that you need really fast. I'm quite a fan of it. And of course, assuming that the AI actually decides to attack me, there's a good chance the AI might wise up and know it shouldn't attack me. Here we go. It's fusion something, something real quick. Hopefully it's not too much stronger than my Dark Magician Girl. It might be 2,700. First of the dragons. Yeah, Dark Magician Girl can take that. Yep. I'll go ahead and switch Berry Magician Girl. See, it doesn't have to attack Dark Magician Girl. I just really want to get her out on the field. Oh, wait. No, this is a mistake. <laughs> I've, got, I've gotten cocky and ahead of myself. I already have messed this up. I totally forgot. Most of the Magician Girls, when their effects are activated to summon another monster, they um, reduce the attacking monster's attack by half. There are only two Magician Girls that do not do that. That's alright, we're gonna fix this. Dark Magic Circle, bring out another Sage Stone here. Real quick, check this shit out. And I will get Chocolate Magician Girl next turn and Illusion Magician next turn after that. Go ahead and sacrifice Berry Magician Girl, because the important thing here, of course, is that I still had at least one monster on the field to get Dark Magician Girl out. And this duel's already over. Unless he's got more effects than I know of. You can only control one first of the dragons. This card cannot be destroyed by battle, except by battle with a normal monster. Okay, well, sorry about your loss there, buddy, because we're not even going to battle. I'm going to pull one of the Dark Magicians from the deck. Using the power of Sage Stone. This is an old card. You guys already know what that does. I don't need to explain it. Let's me summon a Dark Magician. But I can use it as many times as necessary. Not a once per turn kind of deal. Dark Magical Circle also lets me banish a card when uh, our old pal Dark Magician gets on the field. I can only use that once per turn, however. You know what else is cool? A little bit of XYZ summoning in my Magician deck. I don't know about you, but I like. XYZ summoning. See, this video is mostly an excuse to just go over my magician jet, my magician deck, because it's so cool. There are more mag XYZ magician cards, but these are the only two I've got right now. I magician and illusion magician, and I think illusion magician is way better because it lets me summon the third dark magician from my deck here pretty quickly. And if uh, the gore still had a card on his field, which he does not, I would um, be able to banish it when Dark Magician attacks, but he doesn't. And this duel, like I said, already over. Because when I attack with these cards, I'm going to activate Magician Circle. Unless he's got a Magician in his deck, 
Um, that could cause an issue, but I can also just save Dark Magician's attack for later and banish whatever card he brings out in the field. Look at that. In one turn, look at all the magicians we got out in the field. This is just such a brutal combo. You didn't even get to see some of the other cards I've got in this deck. I'm oh, sorry you didn't have any magicians in the gore, buddy. But you served as a great example for just how potent this Magician Girl deck is. I'm so excited to have this deck finally. I'm going to try not to abuse it. We'll probably not use it in another challenge mode video just because it is too good. And I'm going to be looking to build a Blue Eyes deck next because that'll be exciting. Everyone likes Blue Eyes. But thanks to the gore for your sacrifice. I appreciate it. What did you give me? I didn't even know what deck he was using. Uh, Chem Critter? Cool. I'll probably never use that. Or maybe it's really good and I just didn't even get a chance to check it out. But that Magician deck is way too good. Let's check out that fucking recipe. Here we are. Just gonna give you a quick overview. Got three Dark Magicians for obvious reasons. He's the, one of the most important pieces of the deck. We got three Apple Magicians. She's pretty important as well just because of the way she can give you cards back from your graveyard when it's destroyed. Her, she's a little bit weaker than the other Magician Girls because her ability only lets you special summon a level 5 or lower from your hand, which means you can't get out any of the important monsters like Dark Magician Girl with her. But, I mean, her recovery ability from the graveyard is pretty good. I have Apprentice Illusion Magician, only two copies of them. You can special summon her by discarding a card, and then it'll also draw you a Dark Magician. So she's got a good draw power, pretty high attack for a monster you can get out in the field for basically for free. I've got Berry Magician Girl, I've got for the draw power as well, that's why I've only got two copies of her. You saw in the duel there, you can normal summon her, you can draw a card, and then when she's attacked you can also summon a card. She doesn't affect the other monster that's attacking at all though, which kind of makes her the weaker of the Magician Girls while she's on the field, but I mean you can kind of expect her to be the weakest of the Magician Girls. So if the card that you're going to be summoning isn't stronger than the monster that's attacking, it's almost not as worth to use her effect, or at the very least you might want to just use her effect to get out Apple Magician Girl, that way you can recover cards from the graveyard. You got Chocolate Magician Girl, three copies of her. She allows you to discard any spellcaster so you can draw another card and then she can pull a card from the graveyard when she's attacked, also cutting the opponent's attack in half when doing so and then forcing them to attack the card you special summoned. So she's really good when you can discard a Dark Magician and then get him out into the field for basically for free if she's attacked. Obviously people aren't going to willingly attack a Chocolate Magician Girl most of the time, but the fact that you can discard a card and then recover it from the graveyard and then draw another card is really nice because then you can get out some of the other material. Three Dark Magician Girls for obvious reasons because she's just can trigger a lot of the spell cards. She's got a lot of support on her own. Plus every time Dark Magician goes to the graveyard via whatever the case may be, you're discarding it for an XYZ summon or Chocolate Magician Girl. Her attack power goes up as well. Kiwi Magician. You basically just use Kiwi Magician as a spell card because when you discard her, you can gain each monster, or each Magician Girl gains 300 attack and defense, which is really good for a counter when you're being attacked, because that can add up really quickly, plus it can apply to every Magician Girl you have out on the field, and it stacks, so that's really cool, because if you have two of these, you can activate it, and then it'll happen twice, so you can get like 600 attack per activation, if there's only that one Magician Girl and Kiwi, she's also included. But yeah, you pretty much never summon her because she requires a sacrifice. So there's real, no real point to bring her out in the field unless she's uh, brought out in the field by Apple Magician Girl's effect. Lemon Magician Girl also have three copies of her. And you can tribute monsters on the field to draw another card. I typically don't use this effect too much. But if I've got Berry Magician Girl out on the field and she hasn't been attacked yet, I'll sacrifice her with Lemon Magician Girl's effect. And whenever she's attacked, you can special summon a card from your hand. So if you've used your draw power to get out a Dark Magician in your hand, you can easily summon him from the field if she gets attacked. And it also forces the attack onto the card that you summon and reduces the attacking monster's attack in half. So that's really good. That's why I like using her. I, she's probably, you know, on the same tier as Apple Magician. Not very, not the best. Chocolate Magician's preferable, but since any additional draw power is really good. Mass, uh, Magician of Dark Illusion here. He can act as a Dark Magician while on the field, and he also can act as fodder for your XYZ summon, so he's really good in that essence. He's also really good for the fact that you can special summon him. I use Magician of Dark Illusion and Magician's Defense in tandem a lot of the time. I usually will wait whenever I draw Magician's Defense to use this card until I get 
Magician of Dark Illusion, so that way I can force its special summon every time. And if it is special summoned through its effect, and you have a Dark Magician in the graveyard, again through any other means, you can bring Dark Magician back from the graveyard using him. So we have a couple different ways to get Dark Magician back from the graveyard, which is really nice. Really good when he's such a vital part of the deck. Dark Burning Attack, obviously, that's some of the Dark Magician Girl support we were talking about, since it's so easy to get Dark Magician Girl out in the field in this deck, especially with Berry Magician. Good to have a couple of bits of support there. To not go too heavy, I have Dark Burning Magic as well, where if you have Dark Magician and Dark Magician Girl, destroy every card your opponent controls. That's really good, because it is so easy to get those two cards out. But I didn't want three of each of these. I figured two of each of the supports would be good. Dark Magician Circle, I have three copies of these. One, because of the draw power. Two, you can set the uh, order of the three cards that you draw, so you can pick your next three cards. Plus, while it's on the field, whenever you get a Dark Magician out on the field, you can banish a card. It's a nice way to prevent any Magicka Trap cards from sneaking up on you. Got three Stage Stones. Obvious reasons, more ways to get Dark Magician out for free. Especially if you have one Dark Magician girl, but you can draw two or three of these Sage Stones, you can get all your Dark Magicians out. That's fantastic. Magician Circle, the same kind of deal. Be able to get Dark Magician Girl out again, super easy. And any additional special summon while you're already attacking, really good. Every once in a while, your opponent will also have a special or a spellcaster, and that will kind of bite you in the ass, but that's few and far between. Magician's Defense, like I said, I mostly use this just to get out Magician of Dark Illusion. I don't really care about its other effects. That's why there's only two of them. But while you control a special summon monster, any battle damage you take is halved. But if you're playing this deck right, you're really not taking much battle damage because all of your monsters trigger the summon of other monsters. So that way, I mean, you're always reducing the amount of damage or attack power that your opponent has in half anyway. And then the two, uh, the cards in the extra deck that I can really use, I don't have Eye of Tamias in the deck, so I can't use any of these fusions cards, but I got Amulet Dragon and Dark Magician Girl the Dragon Knight in this deck. If I decide to put the Eye of Tamias in this deck, I can get these fusion cards out, but there's no real point. So the only ones we really need to focus on are, is Ebon the High Magician. I don't really use him as much because he mostly just lets you activate traps from your hand. But I, like I said, there's not a lot of stuff in the deck that requires activation from the hand. Most of them all have activation requirements and other cards need to be on the field to be activated. So he's not that great. I don't typically use him all that much in comparison to Ebon the Illusion Magician, who obviously works really well with Dark Magician. You know, you get him out on the field, use, hopefully you can use a Magician of Dark Illusion to get him out on the field, and then you can discard a card to get another Dark Magician out on the field if he's in your deck, which is easy draw power, plus when Dark Magician attacks while Ebon Magician is on the field, you can banish a card in addition to the one you're attacking, so if you attack with him, and then, you know, there's only one monster on the field. You can just get a bunch of direct attacks in for free. It's really nice. He's super powerful, I think, in this deck. Way more so than High Magician, especially with the current build setup I have. And then my side deck here, I just have a bunch of cards that I considered putting in the deck, but ended up not. Uh, this, here is the third copy of Apprentice Illusion Magician and Berry Magician Girl. I think I only need two of those in the deck. I don't think they're that strong. They're nice, but not as important as like Kiwi or Dark Magician Girl herself. The Dark Magician of Chaos, I thought about putting him in the deck, but eh, not really that important. Magician's Robe and Magician's Rod, I didn't think were that effective as Dark Magician support in comparison to a bunch of the other cards. And since I wanted this to mostly be a Magician Girl deck with Magi Dark Magician acting as support, I figured these two weren't as necessary. I wanted the emphasis on the Magician Girls. They have more effects that work with each other. I didn't want them all to end up being circling back to Dark Magician. That way the deck isn't as dependent on one monster. Third copy of Dark Burning Magic. Didn't think Dark Magic Attack was as important because I really don't have as strong of an emphasis on getting Dark Magician out in this deck in comparison to Dark Magician Girl. And when I do get Dark Magician out in this deck, my, or my top priority is usually transferring him into Ebon Illusion Magician. So didn't need that these effects based on the number of Dark Magician girls on the field and in the graveyard. I thought this could be really strong, but ultimately I decided not to have this in the deck because I figured I'd already be losing pretty hard if multiple Dark Magician girls or Dark Magicians are in the graveyard. I've probably already lost control of the duel, so I want to really put the pressure on before they all go to the graveyard. And then as I didn't really put a lot of ways in this deck to get them back from the graveyard. because So it's mostly just applying the pressure really fast. 
Dark Magic Inheritance. This is also really good, so I was pretty torn on adding this to the deck or not. Ended up not doing it, but being able to um, draw cards that I'd like. Really strong, but like I said, ended up not doing it because I didn't look, like banishing stuff. Really could probably add these to the deck because, I mean, none of these cards can be reused once they go to the graveyard, but nah. This is the card you need to get Dark Magician to Chaos in. Ultimately, I decided not to put him in because, like I said, wanted it to be more about the girls. And if you add Dark Magician to Chaos in there, there's got to be like three of him and then three of this spell card, and then it reduces the amount of support you can get. Just kind of gunks up the wheels in this deck a lot, I thought. I didn't really need him. Illusion Magic is a really good way to get Dark Magician back out of the graveyard, but like I said, I've kind of figured if in this deck, if they're all in the graveyard, I'm already, and I'm not winning, already in trouble. So Illusion Magic would be a recovery card that I don't really need. Magic Formula, I opted not to use because it's limited to only two monsters, and whereas Kiwi Magic Magician usually can do a better job of boosting any of the Magician Girl's effects or attack power, and she applies her effects to everybody but Dark Magician. So I thought it was mer worth more to have Kiwi instead of Magic Formula. She affects more cards. Ayatomias. I really considered putting Ayatomias in just because the fusion monsters are so powerful. Again, I opted not to just because I thought the Magician Girls themselves were more strong or more powerful than the fusion monsters. Might not be a bad idea to just put one Ayatomias in and then maybe I take out one of the Dark Magic Circles. But I like the draw power that the Dark Magic Circles provide and it's hard to use the support cards for the dark or for the uh, fusion cards because they're not technically Dark Magician or Dark Magician Girl. So I didn't really use that. Eternal Soul has a bunch of cool effects, but um, it just when it leaves the field, it destroys all of your monsters. And like I said, I don't have ways, that many ways to get cards back from the graveyard besides Apple Magician Girl, so I don't like this card. But he does have cool effects, not bad. Then the third copy of Magician's Defense. I found I was really only using this card to summon Magician and Dark Illusion, so I didn't think I needed three copies. But yeah, that's the basic overview of my recipe. That's mostly what this video was and a quick preview of it in challenge mode just to show that I can still take on these new V Reigns monsters. I really like this deck. I gotta imagine it's gotta be higher tier. I mean, maybe it's not. I'm sure someone, people in the comments will let me know. That deck actually sucks. You wouldn't get anywhere in the tournaments. I'm really happy with this deck. This is probably the deck I'll use, you know, if I ever play online with this game. If you guys drop some of your Nintendo Switch names in the comments or in my Discord so you can see when I'm I'm actually playing live because it'll show up in my little Discord name playing Link Evolution or whatever. But I'd like some feedback. Let me know if what you guys think of this recipe, if this is a good build, if you what changes you guys would make, what cards that exist that I might not have unlocked yet that would also be good for this deck, and all that kind of cool stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed this minor break in the uh, challenge mode so far. And that you're enjoying the Arc 5 story as well in my Link Evolution playlist, which I will link probably at the end of this video, or maybe at the end of a different one. I don't know. Who cares? Check out the playlist on my channel. There's a playlist page. It's got to be towards the top. It's one of the ones with the most views, so check that out. Or any other video series that's piquing your interest if you're looking to check out something other than Yu-Gi-Oh! I play a bunch of other games. So like, share, subscribe, share the video, join the Discord, follow me on Twitter, all that cool stuff. But above all else, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. See you next time. What? What is this? Come on, come on, come on! Let me hear that adorable voice! Oh! <laughs> oh! That's where this is going, huh? Sorry to disturb you while you're, um, busy. It's time for a tutorial. You can fight away the tentacles 